All right, we're at the grade on conformity and students are looking at these metamorphic rocks that are cut by a pegmatite dike. And then you can see overlying it is the flathead sandstone with a breccia at the base of it. You can see the breccia right, right there. There's the breccia right there. Here's the dike right there. And that's cutting across these metamorphic rocks. And that boundary between the two is a time uh, gap, if you will. There's no gap in time, but it's a point where there's no deposition between rocks that are 1.8 billion years old, the metamorphic and igneous rocks, and the overlying breccia and sandstone of the flathead formation, which uh, comes in at about 520, 515 million years. So uh, there's over a billion years not represented along that line, hence what we call the Great Unconformity. All right. Super cool. All right, there's a close up. You can see the dike going up into uh, the metamorphic rocks uh, that are foliated, uh, that layering that you see in the darker colored rocks. And then uh, the basal lag deposit um, is breccia of dike materials, um, quartz and feldspar in the basal bed of the flathead sandstone. And those were moved around just a little bit and then very rapidly buried by the rising sea that deposited beach sands over the top of that basal lag, um, stopping them from moving and maintaining them as angular blocks of rock. Okay, so, uh, you know, this debate that rages about whether the contact between the metamorphic rocks down there at the head of my hammer uh, and the overlying flathead sandstone being either tectonic or, or, or a depositional contact is pretty much solved right here in this outcrop, um, where you can see that that basal lag of breccia from the dikes is actually a trough crossbed. Um, that is scoured down into the underlying basement, which is uh, where the top of my hammer is. And, uh, and then those are, those are particles that were deposited um, from the dike in that trough crossbed with the rising sea um, over that surface. Uh, the neat thing about that surface is, is that it had formed in the collision of continents 1.8 billion years ago, an event called the Big Sky Orogeny, where a block called the Medicine Hat Block sutured against the North American continent, what's called the Wyoming Craton, and uh, it uplifted mountains that probably were like Himalayan in size, and they eroded away and eventually eroded all the way down to sea level, and when sea level rose up, about 515 million years ago, it deposited these beach sands and that basal lag breccia deposit over that eroded surface. And that's the great unconformity uh, right there at the top of my handle on my hammer. So um, we see this thing uh, everywhere between uh, the basement and the overlying uh, Cambrian basal sandstone. You can see it in the Grand Canyon as well as seeing it right here in Camp Creek in Montana. All right, now as you go up section in the Flathead Sandstone, these beach deposits um, are forming long stringers of sand. Some of them are trough cross bedded, and you can see a hummock right straight center in the field of view. 
And that hummock formed at a time when uh, there was a storm uh, that moved the grains back and forth and back and forth and piled them up into a big pile called a hummock or a hummocky crossbed. And then as the storm waned, silt and clay fell out of the uh, water column and accumulated over the hummock and it created that recessed layer above the hummock, um, which is the post-storm fallout of fine grain sediment from the water column. And, All right, so sea level has risen up to the point where we now have limestone forming because the ocean has been pushed so far to the east that the source of land-derived silt and clay and sand um, has gone away. And that allows organisms that secrete calcite to flourish and they make limestone. And you can see in this limestone, which is a carbonate mudstone, it's full of burrows. Those light colored things that you're looking at are worm burrows. And you can see their tubes and some of them are open. And uh, these were animals that were burrowing through the mud uh, looking for organics and uh, the burrows are preserved uh, in this. It's called the Mar Limestone and it's the it's the end of our big Cambrian transgression across the uh, basement uh, surface uh, that we started at with the Great Unconformity. So to wrap it all up, the Great Inconformity represents a period of time when plates collided with one another, uplifting huge mountains that rivaled the modern Himalayas today. And over the following billion years, those mountains were eroded down to sea level. And when sea level rose up, it deposited beach sands of the Flathead Formation over the top of that eroded surface. That's the Great Unconformity. With continued sea level rise, the beach sands were eventually overlain by offshore shelf muds of the Wolsey Formation. And eventually, as the shoreline moved way inland to the east, it was overlain by the Mar Limestone, forming the transgressive sequence of the Cambrian. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to Montana Geology with the Rock Doctor. Tune in again next time and catch some more great geology in Big Sky Country.